So far we have looked at the asymptotic notation very informally. In the next several videos, we are going to look at the asymptotic notation in a more formal mathematical manner. To summarize our approach so far, we took the examples of algorithms like insertion sort and we derived an exact expression for the running time of the algorithm. We defined the running time as a function t of n. So this is a function of the input size n and we derived an expression for t of n by assuming constant costs like c1, c2, c3, etc for the various elementary steps in the pseudocode. Then having derived an overall expression for t of n based on the pseudocode of the algorithm, we then looked at how t of n grows as the input size becomes very large. So we decided to drop the lower order terms and ignore constant coefficients. For example, if the expression for t of n for any algorithm turned out to be 8n cube plus 4n square plus 107n plus 57510, we would drop the lower order terms, which means these terms would get dropped and we would ignore the constant coefficients, which means this 8 would get ignored. And then we would represent t of n as theta of n cube by this theta notation or this asymptotic notation where all that we track is the rate of growth of t of n as a function of n. So t of n grows as a cubic function of n. That's all that we are tracking when we represent t of n in this way. So this makes the uh, this makes the notation machine independent. So it doesn't matter which machine you're running it on. It doesn't matter what programming language you're, used to, you're using to code up the algorithm. It doesn't matter what compiler you're using. It doesn't matter uh, what other jobs there are running on the machine. This analysis will apply regardless of these platform dependent parameters. Now, independent of the machine used, the following is true. If you have an algorithm for a problem that solves it in, say, theta of n square time, and if you have a bunch of other algorithms which run in time theta of n cube, one can say that the algorithm that is asymptotically most efficient will eventually run the fastest as the input size n becomes large. So even if I run this theta of n square algorithm on a, a machine from the early 90s, and even if I run the algorithms which, uh, which solve the problem in theta of n cube time on supercomputers of today, as the input size n becomes large enough, eventually this algorithm is going to beat this algorithm, even on the slower machine. So independent of the machine used, once the input size becomes large, an algorithm that has a slower rate of growth is eventually going to beat all other competing algorithms. But that may not necessarily happen on small inputs. For example, we've seen that the worst case complexity of merge sort is theta of n log n and the worst case complexity of insertion sort is theta of n square. So comparing these two, clearly merge sort is asymptotically more efficient. So for large input sizes, merge sort is going to run faster than insertion sort. But this may not apply on small inputs. And the reason for that is, if the constant coefficient associated with this dominant term, n log n, is very large, 
and if the corresponding constant coefficient for for the term n square in the expression for the running time of insertion sort is very small right let's say this is c1 times n log n and this is c2 times n square i'm just representing the dominant term here we've dropped the lower order terms on both sides now if c1 is large let's say c1 is large and let's say c2 is small both are constants but there is a difference in their values if the value of n is small if we take an input that is small then it's possible that merge sort may actually take more time because this large constant is being multiplied with n log n to determine what the overall running time is whereas here even though we have an n square term for small inputs there's not that much of a difference between n log n and n square the difference between the constants may actually be much larger initially than the difference between n log n and n square so it's possible that even for small inputs because c2 is small this value overall may end up being less than this value which is why insertion sort runs faster on small inputs the algorithm only works with the input array it doesn't need any extra space whereas we've seen that in merge sort we have to recursively call the same algorithm on smaller and smaller sub problems and there needs to be a lot of dynamic memory allocation and deallocation which is going to basically increase the value of this constant but for large inputs we can assuredly say that insertion sort is going to perform worse than merge sort merge sort will eventually win regardless of what machines both these algorithms are being run on now the notation that we have seen for representing the rates of growth of the running time which is which was the theta notation is actually one of many different existing asymptotic notations so in the next several videos we are not only going to look at the theta notation more formally we are also going to look at other kinds of asymptotic notations such as the big o notation the big omega notation the little o notation and the little omega notation among these five we will tend to use the first three pretty often in this course so with that let's move on to a formal treatment of the theta notation one last point before we uh before we look at the theta notation formally we are going to assume that because t of n represents the running time of an algorithm so we are going to assume that t of n is greater than or equal to 0 it doesn't make sense for the running time of an algorithm on an input of size n to be negative similarly we are going to assume that the input size is also greater than or equal to 0 again it doesn't make sense for the input size to be negative furthermore we'll assume that the input size can take values like 0 1 2 3 and so on the size of an array for example cannot be a fraction so our input sizes in reality will be discrete values like 0 1 2 3 and so on discrete non negative values non negative integers but in our treatment of the asymptotic notation for example when we talk about the expression for the running time being 
c1 times n log n or c2 times n square or being represented as theta of n square, theta of n cube and so on. In thinking about these functions, we will think about them as continuous functions even though we know that in reality their domains, the domain of these functions is basically the set of non-negative integers. So in reality the values of n are going to be discrete but in thinking about these functions we are going to treat them as continuous functions. You'll see that in a few videos we'll also be uh, sometimes differentiating some of these functions. So we'll be assuming that they are continuous while keeping at the back of our mind the fact that those functions are really relevant to us at discrete values of n. So with that, let's move to a formal treatment of the various asymptotic notations, starting with the theta notation. 